is Ryan Rowan Smith. He does all the games on television with our pal Dave Sims. There you see him. Ryan, welcome. That is a heck of a win last night. It's one thing to beat Washington in a doubleheader. Everybody beats them. But to go down to Texas, who have been playing very well, and to score all those ones late against the Rangers, that was a gut check. What a job. Let's go through it for a yeah. sec. Go ahead. It was, it was a massive win last night. I think that was a situation where you get sixth or seventh inning, and because you, you've been doing what you're doing, you just rattled off 10 before that. You have that belief system, I feel like, where you can just do the little things to make it happen. But, man, this has been an absolute run. Mad Dog, I'm not going to lie. I was with you early on in the year. I'm talking even as close as three weeks ago. This team was 10 games below 500 and you think to yourself man massive disappointment everyone started asking me i was on that 2010 team where we had all these expectations and people started to ask me is this the same thing as what we saw in 2010 and i said man i hope not but they have turned it around the other in a great spot 100 percent. those two wins in san diego were important all right they beat the orioles a couple beat oakland they went down to san diego against a good team and won two games easily uh, yeah. That, I think, raised some eyebrows. Then they got back to with Toronto and they had a little momentum. I think those two games in San Diego, Ryan, you follow them every day. I don't. I thought that yeah. was significant. Thoughts on that? Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, th I think in the fact that they put up an eight spot, then they put up another big bunch of runs. The big question mark for this team was the offense. Were they ever going to turn it around? And then you mentioned that Blue Jays series. They're facing a tough team. You've got all these Blue Jay fans that come down below uh, under, uh, below the border and, and then they you know make a you know, huge mess of the stadium, but they swept them. I want to go back, though, to the brawl against the Angels when Jesse Winker got into it. This was one guy they brought over in the offseason, and he was going to be that big impact, a big trade, him and Eugenio Suarez. And he wasn't doing a whole lot. He was a bit of a disappointment at the beginning of the year, but he's kind of like that, the loudest guy in the clubhouse. So all of a sudden, this happens with the brawl. You can't put any numbers behind this, but I think that really brought them together because he was in the thick of it. And since then, he's served his suspension. He's starting to clean things up offensively. And different things happen inside the clubhouse. And now he's the loudest guy in the clubhouse. He's starting to do good things. Kind of like that class clown when that kid is being disruptive. But if everyone's getting their work done, he can be funny. I think that Jesse Winker has been a huge impact. I think he's going to have a big second half too. And that's a good job on the brawl. You're right. They have played very, very well. They won that game 2-1. to one, And they have played very, very well here. And now Brawl maybe united him a little bit, so good job there. All right, listen, what do they – they got pretty good starting pitching. You know, I mean, obviously Gilbert's very good. Gonzalez is a veteran. He's been around. Kirby's going to be a good pitcher. They got pretty good starting pitching. Do they have enough offense? Do they need another stick? What's the story as far as deadline is concerned? He won't be bashed for DePoto. He made trades last year. Do they need another stick with this lineup most importantly, Ryan? Let me hear your thoughts on that. I think there's two things. I think, first of all, uh, Adam Frazier, who they brought over in a trade as well this offseason, he has been below, uh, below average. He's hitting around 220, 225. But he's starting to pick it up a little bit. So it's going to be interesting. But back to the pitching, I think the biggest need for them at the trade deadline, and it is going to be competitive, they have to get another starting pitcher. And you think, and you look at this rotation and you think to yourself, well, every five, every, every one in the rotation is doing good things every five days. But George Kirby's an interesting one. He's a young prospect. They want to limit the innings on him. He didn't throw a whole lot last year. He didn't even pitch in 2020. So I think their biggest need is going to have to be another starting pitcher. But it's going to be competitive. But like you said, I think Jerry DePoto is going to surprise us a little bit by getting some move that we didn't think about. We're all talking about you know, Frankie Montas, even Madison Bumgarner's name has popped up a little bit. There's someone who has some veteran experience. The other aspect of this too, talking about the trade deadline, regardless of getting that big stick or getting a pitcher, is someone with some playoff experience. That's the one thing with these Seattle Mariners. There's just no playoff experience. And when you're in a clubhouse and you don't have those veterans who have been there, done that, it can be a little, little tough. So someone who's like kind of like that role player who can, who can be in that clubhouse and, and kind of weather that storm once September rolls around would, would be good too. All right, last year they were in a race. They lost two out of three last weekend. They won the 90 games. Is that going to be a big plus for them going down the stretch in 2022? Well, I think that puts more pressure on this front office. They had that big weekend, like you said. They missed out by a game. The Red Sox and Yankees took care of business, so they were you know, eliminated from it. But that went into the offseason, putting some pressure on the front office to make some big moves. They got Robbie Ray. Everyone was happy about that. Then they had to deal with a lockout, which I really, really feel like it affected the Mariners' chances to acquire more. So they had a little bit of a depth issue. But going back to the end of that year, that is why they're in a position right now where we're weeks away from the trade deadline. 
where Jerry Depoto has gone from this rebuild stage that he has from 2018. Now it's time to make that pivotal move, I think, uh, for them to really have a good run at this. But they are so close. And I think last year really just sort of brought everyone on board, turned this place back into a baseball town. And everyone's on board. So everyone's expecting uh, some big things. Hopefully at the, at the deadline, they can make some moves for sure. And, la and last question, Ryan, the advantage they're going to have is that the American League East is going to beat each other up. And yeah. they have a lot of games with Texas. Uh, they got Oakland, the Angels. You know, I know that they're going to be done with Houston by August 1st. So a scheduling scenario with who they play in their division in September compared to who the other teams play in the American League East, one of those teams is not going to make it. That is, I think, a big advantage for them last 50, 60 games. Let me get your take on that. Yeah, hey, don't forget about the Baltimore Orioles who somehow are starting to win games. That's true. And they're over in that yes. East. Yeah, beating up on some of these teams. So you make a great point. The one thing, and back to you know the, the schedule and heading into the trade deadline, they have the Houston Astros leading right up to that deadline. So it's going to be interesting. When it comes down to the crunch, when that big call has to be made, where do they stand? Are they going to be closer to the, the Astros who are running away from it? But I, I think September is going to be a good month. They're winning with pitching. Their bullpen has been the best in baseball uh, on this uh, long stretch, th this last stretch. Their starting pitching has been amazing. I think the month of September is going to treat them well, like you said, with the schedule. And hopefully the ALEs can beat each other up a little bit. Ryan, great job. We'll get you on again. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Thanks again to a camera. Appreciate it very much.